Hello folks, welcome to the Brotherhood of the Arrow and Sword. I'm Sir Brian, and today it's just me. Lady Evelyn is off doing important Lady Evelyn stuff. But today, I want to show you my latest project. What is it, you might ask? Well, stick around and find out. Now I need to preface this video by saying that this is my very first video I've ever done for this channel. It should be very interesting, to say the least. Now this latest project is a gift for my son Kyle. It's in his scran shield with his heraldry on it. What's in his scran shield, you might ask? Well, take a look at this. The scran shield was a type of jousting shield used during the Middle Ages. You could find it in artwork all throughout the time period. You could find it in different shapes and sizes and all different materials. They were very colorful and showed the heraldry of the knights. Okay, maybe not this one. I don't know what this one is. Who put this one in here? Historical examples of these shields can be seen in museums all over the world, alone and on armor itself. Examples can even be seen in the modern jousting list today. Here's our good friend, the world-famous Ripper Moore, international jouster, putting his scran shield to good use. And oh, by the way, he gave us these photos for this video. Thank you, Ripper. Okay, folks, so finally on to business. Now, this shield blank I acquired from Historic Enterprises. Now, we're not sponsored by anybody. We are just throwing that name out there as one place where you can get these shield blanks. Now, they have two different shapes. This one... I picked because I figured it would be the easiest to work with. So I'll be attempting to paint Kyle's coat of arms onto this shield. Now this is what it looks like. So here are the colors I'm going to be using. Now I'm going to be starting with a white primer and then using a gloss red and a gloss blue along with a gloss black and then hopefully finishing it with either a satin or a clear coat. I'm not sure. Now, I am using the gloss and the finish because this shield is designed to be out in all kinds of weather as a display piece. Okay, so now before I start painting, I want to pre-drill the holes for the bolts that are going to hold the straps on the back side. Then I'm going to sand down those holes to make sure they're nice and smooth. Now, the cool thing about this is that Historic Enterprises sends the blank with the holes already pre-marked where they think the straps are going to fit best for you. Okay, so now the holes are all pre-drilled and we've taken the shield and flipped it over on to see you, so you can see the backside. Now you could really see the curvature of the shield from this angle. Now here comes the primer. We're going to be putting the primer on and it's going to be a white. Now you can see that the uh, can is moving around a lot. Well, that's because I am actually talking to the camera. But you can't hear a thing. You know why that is? Because I forgot to turn on the microphone. Yeah, I didn't realize that until the entire shield was all painted and I had shot all of my video. Yeah, this is where it gets interesting, folks. So we're going to go ahead and put a nice light coat of primer on the backside along the edges. And then once that dries, we're going to turn it over and put a nice light coat on the front. And then we're going to keep adding layers until we have a nice even coat all the way across. Okay, so now we have finished with all the layers of primer. And doesn't that look nice? Yeah, we're going to flip it over so you can see the back side. And we have a nice even coat on the back side too. Oh, and we're going to poke at some areas and talk a little bit more to you. And you, again, can't hear us because the microphone is shut off and... For some reason, I'm poking the front. Okay, so now we're starting to put the masking on. I started on the back side, and I am using really thin masking tape so I can get around the edges. Now, if you notice, you can actually hear me working on putting the masking tape down. That's because, for some reason, the microphone started working or I turned it on. I don't remember which. But we're going to keep putting on masking until the whole entire backside is completely covered 
in masking tape, except for this little white band along the edges. Okay, so now all the edges are tied in, and we're going to start filling in the center part with more masking tape. Yeah, so this part gets very boring, so we're just going to jump to the next step. And look at that. Through the magic of television, it is fully masked off on the back side. Now we're ready to start painting. Okay, so here we are, ready to start painting. And we've got the ghostly hand again with no narration behind it because, once again, the microphone was shut off. And I'm going to be using some dark red paint from Krylon. Now I picked dark red because it stands out the most with what I'm going to be doing for the heraldry animals. Now I'm going to be starting with an overall base coat of red and you'll see why in a second. Now I know that the heraldry is two-toned but this is going to make sense once you see why I'm doing it. I'm going to paint the back side first and then once that's dry I'll switch over to the front making sure that I don't mess up any of the paint on the back side. Okay, so now that the paint is dry on the back side, I flipped it over and propped it up so that the top was down more in a horizontal position. Remember how that blank was curved. So I'm going to start off with nice light coats of red on the top part, and then I'm going to finish off by going around the edges to making sure that we have a full coverage of red. Okay, so now that the red is nice and dry, we're going to be using a dark blue from Krylon. Okay, so I've gone ahead and masked off the front and the back for the blue. Now, if you notice the little red all around the edges, you'll see what that's for in a second here. Now, I've flipped the shield over onto its back, and I'm going to start painting with the blue on the back side. I'm going to start with nice, even coats again, and let them dry before I flip it over and start painting on the front. Once the paint was dry, I flipped it over and started painting the front. Now, because the blue is going to be on the bottom, I set the bottom in the horizontal position. Again, using light strokes, I'm going to go around the whole entire shield and making sure that there is blue where it needs to be. After all the paint was dried, I started the laborious process of removing the masking tape from all over the front and the edges of the shield blank. It was quite the long process, I will tell you. Now, I left the masking tape on the back side to protect it while I'm doing all the painting. I'll remove that when I get ready to put on the straps. Here we are getting down to the fun part of the project, putting the snow leopards onto the shield blank. Now, the snow leopards are called charges in heraldry. And charges can also be other types of animals, such as lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, didn't think about that. But this snow leopard happens to be in the rampant garden position, meaning it's erect with its forepaw raised. Now I tried to find the correct size to fit on there, so I printed off several different sizes and hand cut each snow leopard out and placed it onto the shield blank to see how it would fit. Once I found a size that I like for the snow leopards and a position that I like for them on the shield blank, I ended up hand stenciling them. And you can imagine that it took quite the amount of time to do this. Once I had both charges fully stenciled out, I began applying a white base coat to both charges starting with the top one.
the white base coat is now complete on both charges. And what you clearly can't see from this video, because my camera apparently is worse than I thought, is that I have built up the paint on them to give them a 3D effect. I happen to get a better shot using a different camera. I think this shot looks a lot better and shows the 3D effect. What do you think? You can imagine that this was the perfect project to be doing while stuck inside during the snowy months of winter. Before I added the detail on the charges, I decided I was going to put in the thin trim lines around the shield. I ended up using a copper gunmetal colored paint. Here it is with all of those lines in place. Once that was done, I began adding detail to the charges, which you clearly cannot see from this video here. Here's a lot better view using the other camera. Now, I used a gloss black for the eyeballs and the claws. All other black, I used a satin. And you can start to see the aspects of the shading that I've been trying to put in. So now I began working on the cadency. In heraldry, cadency is a symbolmatic way to distinguish arms displayed by descendants of the holder of a coat of arms. Now since this is my coat of arms, and Kyle is so far my first and only son, he gets what's called a label. Now the label is a bar with three points. If I had a second son, he would get an upward pointed crescent. If I had a third son, he'd get a five pointed star, and so on. So just like the charges, I'm going to hand stencil this label into place before putting a white base coat down. Here's a good shot of the first coat on the label. You'll notice that I'm actually starting to work in the shading onto the label to give it a little more 3D effect. And I've also added some trim lines to the blue and red fields. The darker red for the top field and darker blue for the bottom. Now all layers of the white are painted in, along with the shading. Now you'll notice I did mess up with certain angles on the shading, so I later went in and fixed that problem. You'll also notice that I added extra layers of paint in certain lines to give that a little bit more 3D effect to the label. With the label now complete, that meant the rest of the heraldry was complete. I ended up deciding on a clear coat of crystal clear. I put several layers on, which gives it a really nice shine and should protect it well in the elements. With the majority of the work on the shield blank complete, now I need to start working on the straps to hold it on. I'm going to need an upper and a lower strap. The upper strap is obviously going to be a lot longer because it goes up around the neck and the lower strap just goes around the arm. Now I bought this leather from Tandy Leather and I found these buckles at a vendor at an SCA event called Burka in New Hampshire. I've had these buckles for a while. About time to put them to use. Now the straps are all complete. But before I can put them on, I need to start working on the hardware. For the hardware, I went down to the local hardware store and picked up these carriage bolts. Now, obviously, I can't use ordinary hardware on this shield. So I did some creative grinding to it. It's the little details that make it all worthwhile, don't you think? Once the straps and the hardware were complete, I ended up removing the masking tape from the backside of the shield blank and then bolting the straps into place. 
After that, I removed the excess stock on the carriage bolt so they wouldn't be hitting anything in behind. And then peened over that stock into the nut to make everything nice and smooth. And here is the finished product. I'm pretty proud of how it came out. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Now obviously this is going to be used as a display piece and not an actual jousting piece. When you come to our encampment, you'll actually see this on his tent. So folks, I hope you really enjoyed that video. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already to stay up to date with the latest information and to see our latest videos. See you next time.